What's up tricksters and tricksetters from the second YouTube channel? Yes, today we have another VOD review and today at the coaching table we have Death which is a gold 3 player playing Omen on Icebox. Now, this is a free VOD review. Uh, basically, I've already coached Death. As you can see on my Discord server, he has the 200 IQ coach role. Uh, I already did one month of coaching with Death, but I didn't do Icebox with him. I didn't cover this map, so that's why I'm doing this uh, free live VOD review. Uh, Death, uh, I'm not gonna review his tracker. Basically, like, uh, uh, we started the coaching in, in, in episode 7. He was a Hearthstone Silver 2 player. In episode 8, uh, uh, last month, like in February, we did coaching and uh, he was still silver. And then after the coaching, he went from silver 2 to gold 3. And now I think that uh, he's on a really good path to get like, you know, I think this act he's gonna easily get diamond 1 like uh, after the coaching. Now, I've already reviewed his tracker. I've already covered everything like what he needs to do. He is doing some kind of a training. So this VOD review, we're primarily going to dedicate to Omen and Icebox. Like teaching you how to play the map, how to play Omen on Icebox and all of the tricks with Omen. And uh, uh, we're going to answer on his questions as well. Now, how you can get uh, these VOD reviews? You can get these VOD reviews if you are a tier 3 sub on my Discord server. Or if you win a giveaway. On every 50 new Twitch subscribers, I'm doing a... You know, like uh, a coaching giveaway, and you can, you know, join the giveaway, enter the giveaway, and that's it. Now, uh, as I said, like in this one review, we're mainly gonna focus on Icebox and focus on Omen. Now, I already see a question in the chat is Omen a troll on Icebox? Absolutely not. I truly believe that Omen is a far better pickup to Immortal 3. I would never, never in my life play Viper in the lobbies below Immortal 3. Not, not like literally. Never. Like, it, it, it is a death sentence for your win rate. The amount of things that you can do with Viper is very limited. And it is, an amount of outplays that you can do with Omen on this map is ginormous. Like, essentially, I don't think... It, it, when, when I do the rank playbook for Omen on Icebox, that video is gonna be like two hours long. Three, maybe, maybe three hours long, basically. Because there are so many things that you can do, so many cool strategies. And generally speaking, on Icebox, uh, smokes are not that important. Like, basically, like, uh, uh, there are two smokes that are mega important on the attacker side, which is basically a trial and smoke here, and uh, smoke for the screens, while everything else is just improvisation. And even with Viper, you don't have good... Like, why Viper is better after Immortal 3 is because of her ultimate, number one. And number two, like, uh, because of the Molotovs. To stop the plant, uh, to stop the diffuse and sh shit like that. But in the lobbies below Immortal 3, you never know with who the fuck you're playing. Like, you never know with what type of chimp or gorilla you, ha you, you have in your team. And the solo you carry potential Viper is significantly uh, lower than, uh, than Omensky. Now, uh, goal three, Icebox. So let's start, first start with, with his questions, like... Uh, Hello, Papito. As we spoke, there is my VOD review for Icebox. I have a 26% win rate, as you know, because of my cross replacement and angle clearing on this map. I used Omen as we talked and want to get your feedback. Uh, generally speaking, uh, let, let's talk about the Icebox. Uh, Icebox uh, a short uh, guide. Like, what is very important on, on Icebox for you to understand? First of all, your default bombsite. Bombsite is a site. Essentially, like, uh, on Icebox, uh, uh, in the first round, on both attackers and defenders side, I prioritize attacking and defending a site. It is the easier site for the attack, harder site for defense, easier site for the post plant, harder site for the retake. Like, basically, it's a bit more open bomb site. A uh, bomb site where there's enormous amount of executes that you can do, and if you combine a proper utility, it's easy to take, in my opinion, like, at least from my experience. Now, the secondary bombsite for you on this map is obviously the B-site, and the third focus is the mid-area of the map. Now, so in the first round on the attack, I would always push A-site. In the first round on defense, I would always defend the A-site myself, no matter what type of agent I'm playing. And whenever I have no idea what to do next, or what enemies are gonna do next, 
you know, it's better to opt in to play default bomb site. Now, uh, mid area of the map, you want to use for the lurks and flanks and for splits if the team play is not working. Like if your five man pushes on A site and B site are not working in the first, like let's say, four, five, six, uh, four, four, five rounds, then we can try to use the mid area of the map to try to surprise the enemies, especially if they have a poor team composition that doesn't have any sentinel to guard the mid area of the map. Uh, now, uh, B site. On B side, you should usually tr try to test the enemies on the attacker side when you are eco or halbi, or you're playing some kind of a bonus round. And if you notice that enemies have a poor defense of B side, of course, abuse the abuse the B side. Now, uh, second thi thing that you need to master on this map, you need to master using uh, uh, snipers. Like basically, outlaw and operator. So it, it doesn't matter which agent you're playing. I, I don't care. I don't care if you're playing like uh, Viper, Cypher, Omen, uh, Killjoy, whatever the fuck you're playing, you need to master using opera uh, snipers on this map. Like, uh, there's so many common angles that players love to play. It is very easy to clear those common angles. It is very easy on a defender side to capitalize on the poor pathing and poor angle clearing from the enemies. And there is so many off angles and cheeky spots where you can pick the enemies and take an instant kill for your team. Second thing that you need to master, you need to master proper angle clearing, pathing, and crosser placement. Now, obviously, this is important for every single map, like, uh, um, <laughs> you know, like, uh, not, not only icebox, like, uh, uh, but uh, on icebox specifically, it is much more important how you clear the angles, how you path with your teammates, how you play with your teammates, and how you push and hold specific areas of the maps. Uh, angle clearing, angle holding, pathing, and crosser placement. Uh, and crosser placement is very important. Like, uh, how you clear specific angles, where, where you place your crosser, are you following the proper angle holding rules? It's very important. Like, uh, your utility usage doesn't matter at all if this is absolutely shit like like you need to spend time in a custom server in the game focusing on proper angle clearing angle holding pathing and crosser placement and essentially those are the three most important things that you should uh, understand about icebox and uh, we're gonna dive into the map you know, as we're going through this, uh, through this VOD. Now, what is the question? But by the way, guys, uh, as I said, like, I already coached Death, I'm not gonna review his tracker. He has the train. he just started doing his training, like, seven days ago. Uh, he still needs to do the training for two and a half months. Like, it is pointless for me to review his tracker, like, uh, you know, he went from Silver 2 to Gold 3 in less than a month, I think, like, month and a half, which is not bad. Like, to be honest, he was hardstack in Silver 2 with 300 fucking hours. And, uh, um, I'll review your tracker in the next uh, free VOD review, because I'm gonna do another VOD review of his in two months from now to track his progress. Now, what can I do to improve on the executes on A site, especially to clear the actual site with all the f up angles? Good question, we need to focus on that. How do I improve my post plan play with Omen on Icebox, especially for the B set, because I die there the most? We'll talk about it, we'll talk about it. Like, I don't know, I need to see the in-game scenarios and to actually see what's happening for you. Okay, without any further ado, like, let's jump into the, the VOD review. Welcome, welcome. Faikal Sama, welcome sweet man. Dinger, welcome. Pivia Amen, welcome brother. Okay guys, uh, listen, from now on, uh, uh, every single stream, I'm going to start with some kind of a guide, or the VOD review, or some kind of a talking point. And after I finish the VOD review, after I finish the guides, uh, I'm gonna play the game. Because I've noticed, if I play Valorant, before I do the VOD reviews, before I do the stuff, I never do the stuff. Why? Because, you know, if I lose three matches of Valorant, I don't wanna fucking see this game again, you know, like... <laughs> Okay, let's go. Let's see. Icebox. Uh, we are starting on the attack. Very good, very good. Okay, we are strictly going to focus on Omen gameplay. Let's go. 
So, attacker side of five books. Actually, I already explained it. Your default bomb site is a site number one priority, number two priority B site, number three priority mid area of the map. Now, uh, when you're playing Omen on this map, like uh, in the first round of ice books, you have multiple buy options, depending what type of player you are, and depending what is your plan. Option number one: classic light shield, two smokes. Two shrouded steps. Uh, if your plan is to play a bit more aggro, try to outplay the enemies and try to create uh, pressure for your team, which is usually the best idea to do in the first round. Second option is if you want to play semi aggro, like you're not absolutely certain if you're going to go for some aggressive play, ghost, two smokes, and one shrouded step. And if you're really feeling cocky as fuck, and, uh, you know, you think you're mechanically better than the enemies, you can literally go with a Sheriff. You can just literally go with a Sheriff, snipe down the enemies. If you think that your crosser placement, reaction time, mechanical skill is better than majority of these players in the lobby, it's absolutely fine. Because on the A side, of, on, on the A side like, uh, the most important smoke, and uh, only, th this is the only default smoke, that you have on the A site is this smoke right here. And it is placed like that. Like covering the back site, covering the screens, and covering the CT. Now, every other smoke is either improvisation, smoke for some kind of an aggressive play, smoke to deny a certain peak or a certain objective from the enemies, and that's it. A lot of times, if I think that I'm not going to use two smokes to execute a set of ice books, I simply place my smoke at the start of the round in the middle, like this. This smoke applies the mental pressure onto the enemies. Enemies have no idea whether or not you're traveling through mid. Of course, like, you know, place a better smoke, you know, like, don't, don't, don't place it like that. Cover the gap. So enemies have no idea whether or not we are taking mid control. We can use this smoke to surprise the enemies, to outmaneuver them, to maybe, like, flank lurk in, I don't know, other rounds. But in the first round, of course, I'm not gonna do this shit, where we need to do some aggressive play. Now, in the first round, what I usually do with Omen on Icebox is the following. Classic Light Shield, two shoulder steps, and two smokes. Remember one important rule when you're pushing a set of Icebox. Never push through this A link, A belt, A, a short area of the map, if, if you don't want to kill the enemies with some kind of a sniper and pre-fire them on the angles where you saw them before. Like, there is absolutely no reason for you to contest the enemies here. Your teammates are probably going to do their shit for you. Like, there's too many peaks, too many angles to clear, too many positions where the enemies can pressure you. And what I always recommend players in my coaching sessions, if you're pushing the A set of Icebox, always go through the belt and then drop down or continue pushing from the belt, depending on which weapon you have and depending what is your plan. But I heavily, heavily avoid pathing through this area of the map so that I avoid this death this, that, that, and that. It is much better if you just go down here, and from this position you clear that, clear this, clear this, clear that, then get up on the box up here, clear that spot, and then move forward. Now, in the first round, classic light shield, two smokes, two shrouded steps. Uh, in the first round, the setup that I love the most is the uh, setup that uh, is a bit dangerous for your teammates, but if you're playing in the lobby below Immortal 3, personally, I don't give a fuck about my teammates in the first round. Like, in the first round, we're using the smokes not only to support our allies, but also to outplay the enemies, make the pressure onto the enemies, and win the round ourselves. Below the Immortal, especially below Immortal 1, like, uh, not only Immortal 3, like, Lobbies are very unbalanced. 
Like, you never know if you're gonna get a mentally disabled person, person that uh, is toxic, don't wanna communicate. If you're gonna get a jet that is passive as fuck, with Omen in the first round, on every single map, you're going for some aggressive outplay, and you're taking the side control together with your teammates. So, there are two setups that I will do with Omen in the first round when pushing the A site of Icebooks. First setup, doing the smoke for the screens as the default smoke, then teleporting here to reveal the enemies and to scout the enemies with my shrouded steps, like checking this position, that position, all of these positions. And then from this spot, I'm using the smoke either here or here. Then, as my teammates are pathing through this position, I'm getting on top of the 410 generator, using this smoke as a cover from the enemies on site and trying to isolate the enemies in the duels right here. Make sure when you're placing this smoke, that it is not a one-way smoke for the enemies. Like, place it in the middle. Like this. And then, get up here, use the smoke as a cover, clear all of these angles, one by one, and then we can drop down together with our teammates, clear the rest of the site, or what we can do, we can go for an aggressive play behind this smoke. Basically, from this smoke, teleporting all the way here, and from this position, trying to outplay the enemies and try to outmaneuver them. What you want to do depends where you hear the enemies, what your teammates are doing, and how they are pathing. Like on Icebox, what is very important is that uh, you're always paying attention how your teammates are pathing into the bomb site. You don't want to be the only guy on the site, and you don't want to be late to support your teammates. Like on the A set of Icebox, we have a sector number one, which is this sector here. When your teammates are clearing this sector, make sure that you're able to refrag them at every moment of time. As your teammates are pathing from the sector 1 into the sector 2, which is basically, this is the sector number dos, you should always be above your teammates, supporting them from the high ground, and making sure that you're able to refrag them as soon as possible. So, when my teammates are here, I'm always here, 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 here. Then, when my teammates are pathing in, bam, jumping on the ropes, jumping here, taking the fight with the enemies and making sure that I'm able to refrag my teammates. And then, when I notice that my teammates are going towards the sector number three, which is essentially the site and uh, the, the, the back site, then, you know, we're pathing further on, either on this position, on top of the A tower position or top of the site, or I'm dropping down at the back site and fighting with my allies. Now, the second setup, as I've said, uh, that I love to use for the first round is uh, teleporting here, revealing the enemies with this teleport, uh, doing the smoke here, and doing this one-way smoke here. Essentially, on Icebox, there's kind of no reason for you to even fight the enemies at the back side. As long as we can plant the spike here, plant the spike here, Plant the spike on top of the site, here in the smoke. That's it. I, like, we don't need the control of the backside. We can just plant the spike, fall back, play the post plant, and that's it. Now, uh, this smoke I use for the same purpose. Basically, like, uh, we do this smoke setup, covering the angles for the enemies. When my teammates are pathing in, I'm using the ropes on top of my teammates, dropping down, and I'm clearing the angles together with my allies. And I will always come into my smoke to clear the smoke and to clear this position for my team. And then, you know, we are planting the spike, fighting the enemies at the backside, trying to support my allies, all of that uh, good, good, all, all that good stuff. Now, uh, let's see what he's gonna do. I see that uh, he bought the, the ghost in the first round. I mean, it's fine. You can do that. And by the way, listen, listen. I kinda never teleport inside of this smoke and inside of this smoke. I think it's a bit of a waste of teleport. I think... Uh, I don't remember last time when I died 
using the zip lines. Maybe I'm picking some good timings. I mean, you need to pick a good timing to use the to use the zip line. Like I would only teleport in the smokes if I'm 100% certain that enemies cannot be inside of uh, of these smokes. If teammates keep pushing backside, should we trade them or play safe postplan? Depends how many teammates uh, uh, who is playing back. Like uh, I don't know if I have a viper and Sova that are playing lineups from. I don't know, here, and I have a Reyna that is here, and I'm four versus two, my fuck the Reyna. Play with your teammates. Depends, you know, how many numbers are in the game, and what is your win condition. Okay, let's see what he's gonna do. Uh, okay, going out. we need to be fast. Listen, th this is the problem. Like, uh, for every single agent that you play, you need to practice, and you need to have pre-made setups, for every single round and every outplay that you want to perform. Like, my guy is taking too much time. Like, Sage is already on the belt fighting the enemies. Raze is already on top of the power position. I cannot spend my time doing the smokes. Still doing the smokes when my teammates are pushing in. Like, basically, if the callout is to do a fast 5-man push onto the A site, you can use your first smoke immediately. You know, the round starts, drop the first smoke as you're pathing on top of the belt. Then use the teleport here, you know, to scout the enemies. I missed it, sorry. And then when your teammates are moving in, we use the second smoke and then we push together with them and that's it. What is very important on Icebox is you need to learn, you know, to have, you need to have sick movement on this map. Like you need to learn all of these, uh, Mechanics that I'm showcasing you right now, you like to have freedom in your movement on top of the bomb site. And 90% of time, 99% of time, when I'm pushing a set of icebox, I'm always above my teammates. Because a lot of times my teammates don't have the confidence to be up. And you need to develop that confidence. Like, you need to develop the feeling for all of the angles from which enemies can kill you, proper crosshair placement for all of these spots in a custom server, and to develop a freedom in your movement on top of the site. Like, you really need to move, move like a fucking gorilla, like, you know, on the A site, and to be able to perform every single, you know, jump spot, to have a perfect crosshair placement at every moment of time for, for the enemies. Do we need to yell like Indians while scalping the enemies? Maybe you can do that as well. Uh, okay, let's see what he's doing now. So, one problem in this round is we are way too late to support our teammates, most aggressive teammates. We need to play faster with them. And the second problem is our smokes are also late. You see, this cannot happen for you. In a gold elo, platinum elo, you cannot allow this shit to happen. This sage, only God knows how good or how bad she is. O only God. Like, in a game of Valorant, your number one priority when it comes to team play is refragging and playing with your most aggressive teammates that are doing something useful at that moment of time. Especially in the first round. First rounds should always be a five and aggressive push towards one specific objective together and playing a proper refrag game. We have more numbers. It is the easiest moment of time for us to play on the refrag game because of the semi-automatic weapons. We have more utilities than the enemies, significantly more utility, because in the first round, the enemies cannot buy everything. So yeah, you know. Viper down red side. Watching here. And by the way, listen, whenever you're p placing, uh, this, is a, this is another setup that I use, like, I kind of stopped using this setup in the first round. Uh, in my coaching videos, uh, he probably saw this setup. Like, basically, you have the Omen setup, where you do this smoke, you do this smoke here, and basically, like, uh, you're trying to, uh, my mouse is not jumping. My mouse is not jumping. Bro. So, basically, uh... You're using the smokes to outplay the enemies, outmaneuver them and isolate them in the fights. But this smoke setup, I kind of use like only in eco rounds and halby rounds and the bonus rounds. When we have the close range weapons, uh, we need to outmaneuver the enemies on the bomb set and that's it. 
I, I don't know, like, I mean, for the first round, it's way too risky setup, like, uh, your teammates don't have the cover for anything. And it's, it's kind of fucked up, to be honest. Like, uh, I would just recommend you keep the smoke here. And the second smoke, like, use for some kind of fun play. Gun. And remember, when you're playing Omen, like, uh, the smoke that you're using for some kind of an outplay. Like, uh, basically, some aggressive smoke or smoke where you want to teleport inside or outside of it should always be the second smoke. And the gap between your execute and the smoke cannot be longer than three seconds. If you're more than three seconds late to perform some kind of an outplay, it's way too risky. Maybe enemies are gonna figure out, uh -huh, this smoke enemy is gonna TP there, like, what the fuck is he gonna do? Like, the outplay smoke and your execute, three seconds time distance. I'm here. Uh, crosshair placement, zero points, absolutely. Like, uh, when he teleported here, when he teleported here, like, just a second, we need, we need to go. We need to go back. So, we need to clear this angle. We need to clear that angle, that position. Then, we need to clear this position, this position. Like, why is our crosshair in the middle of the smoke? Like, basically, if I'm engaging the enemies from here, like, we're clearing that spot, clearing that spot, these positions, you know, we have this smoke here in this round, so, you know, it's fine. We don't need to clear that. Then, we can also jump spot the enemies here. Aha, uh -huh. enemies are there. Bop, 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 bop. Then we are moving in. My, my raise is pushing in. Ropes immediately, bop, bop. Supporting my raise, trying to outplay the enemies. Aha, uh -huh. raise is backside. Let's kill the raise together with our raise, and that's it. Here, the best game decision would be to just use the ropes, travel fast on top of the site with the ropes, and try to su uh, support our race, which is the most aggressive teammate, doing something useful at this moment of time. The easiest and the best way to improve your crosshair placement in Valorant and the movement and pathing is regular deathmatch and spending like 15 to 20 seconds per day in a custom map. Like, there is... there's no other way. Like, uh, and of course, by playing the game, obviously. Like, uh, uh, basically, like, uh, you know, there's no other training that you can do. It's all about the play time, it's all about the, you know, investing your time into that shit and your mind as well. Like, uh, uh, if you feel that you have a problem with, uh, I don't know, pathing, angle clearing and movement on Icebox, Spend like three weeks, three weeks, only practicing Icebox in a custom server. When you get Icebox in ranked, 15 to 20 seconds, 15 to 20 minutes, sorry, minutes, minutes. Like, uh, you get Icebox in ranked, only try to hyper-focus on replicating what you learned in a custom server. Hyper-focus. This is why I say that uh, it's a bit of a problem that we don't have a map picking system in Valorant because you cannot really, like, I don't know, at least in Unrated or Swiftly, there should be an option to pick a map so that you can actually practice the map in a similar situation that you would encounter, you know, in-game. But because you don't have a map picking system, like, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a deathmatch, like... Uh, only God knows what you're gonna get. And in, in um, unrated I'm matches, it's good. Uh, okay, okay, plant is fine. Okay, uh, with this plant, with this plant that they managed to do here, just play passively. You know? Like, just play passively and just, that's it. Like, this, this basically, the best postman positions, especially for Omen on A site, is planting the spike here, planting the spike here, and planting the spike here. Why? We have this one way. Cover going out. Bam. Enemies cannot defuse the spike. We have this one way. Bam. Enemies cannot defuse the spike. Oh, sorry, I missed it. I missed it. You know, like omen, om, omen main, omen main. Like enemies cannot defuse the spike. Uh, wh why is this spot good? We also have a one-way smoke. Like basically, you can put a smoke 
I, I cannot find it in in a in a shadow form like only like this. We can put the smoke all the way up here, bam. A one-way smoke for the enemies. So really try to force your teammates on ice box and to force yourself to plant the spike always here, here, and here if possible. But okay, our teammates are going back. I don't know. I I really feel that in this scenario here. There is absolutely no reason to play on the site anymore. Let's just tell your teammates, hey guys, you know, Phoenix, stay on the belt. Like, uh, Deadlock, come with me, and let's play passively. We can just defend the spike from the belt, from the tower, and that's it. What do you think about the angle clearing task on, of Aimlabs Plus? It's okay. I mean, it's good enough. It's okay. It's okay. I tried it and, and, and I, 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 I recommend it actually. It's absolutely fine. Cover going out. What is this? No, j j just tell me what is this? Like, postman scenarios. Like when you're in the postman in Valorant. How you play the postman depends on what is your win condition, how many of your teammates are alive, how many of the enemies are alive, what type of economy your enemy team has, and what type of utility we have. What the fuck is this? And also, where are our teammates position? Like, we are three versus three. Three versus three scenario. Two of, like, it is the first round. Enemies don't have that much utility, to safely defuse the spike. We don't have that much utility to play the lineups. So we need to play the refray game and on the refray potential. We are 3 versus 3. We don't need to pick any unnecessary gunfights with the enemies. We are full HP. We have a smoke available. And two of our teammates are playing passively. Uh, on the icebox of A site. If I have one teammate playing in the sector 3, I'm playing in a sector 3 as well. So one of my teammates is, let's say, here, or here. I'm gonna play with that teammate probably on top of the site or wherever I can refrag him, and that's it. All of, all of my teammates, or one of my teammates, is in the sector number two. I'm playing in the sector number two. Probably on top of the 410 generator, because on that position, I don't know. I found a lot of success uh, taking easy kills and refragging my teammates and plus this position is not that dangerous like uh, if you learn how to properly position this position like in a post plant whenever you're playing an elevated position in Valorant you need to learn to ride the edge of that position like if I'm playing a post plant on top of the 410 generator I'm not playing here I'm not playing here I'm always playing like this bam bam I pick a fight if the fight is not working in my favor, or two enemies peek me in the same time, bam, I can instantly drop down with the knife, re-engage the enemies. I'm hiding here from the enemies, trying to kill the enemies there and here, while my teammates are holding the pipes. Bop, 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 two enemies peek me, aha, uh -huh. let's reset, and let's try to isolate the enemies in a 1v1 fights. Now, if, uh, and of course, if your teammates are here, you can also play on the pipes. Now. If all of my teammates are playing super passively, and all of my teammates are like uh, in the sector number one, then I just play with them, you know, probably from the belt or from the tower, from the cage, from the from the prison, like uh, from the pipes, like depending where my teammates are. So in this scenario, Phoenix and Deadlock are playing passively in the sector number two and sector number three. What are we doing in the sector? Number one. Actually, this is a sector number three, and they're playing in the sector number two and sector number one. Like every single part of the map uh, and every single bomb site, you need to divide in your head in like sectors. Like, because these sectors tell you like uh, where you should play a specific scenario and from which positions you can actually refrag your teammates and pray, play properly with them. Now, do you have an installment for coaching one month the ultimate plan? What do I mean, installment? Like, uh, uh, my the, the payment for one month coaching is split in two parts. 50-50. The first part you pay before the coaching and the second part after we finish like uh, 
the first two sessions. Okay. We lost this round because we are greedy motherfuckers. We don't want to use our brain and we're not paying attention on the minimap. Where the fuck are our teammates? Especially in the first round. Listen, guys. In the first round, like, if this is the ego meter, so this, like, let's say this is the... Let me, let me open the paint. Just a second. So, just a second. So, this is your ego. Ego. So, this is the meter. This is zero, this is ten. Your ego in the first round should be 11. What do I mean by that? So basically, like, uh, in the first round, you need to be, to have 120% focus, number one. Number two, you want to avoid every fucking unnecessary gunfight that you don't need to take. Number three, your only focus is winning that first round as best as you can, staying alive long enough so that you can control the outcome of the round. If you need to go for some aggressive play, go for it, of course. Like, don't bait the shit out of your teammates. But most of the time, there's a lot of the fights that you don't need to take. And these fights are not necessarily costing you the rounds, but they are costing you your life. And if you're dead, you don't control the outcome of your rounds. Because in the first four rounds of the match, on both attackers and defenders' side. Like, my ego is the highest. I only listen to my plan. Because, to be honest, like, I mean, I can listen to my plan because I've done so much analysis of this fucking game. Like, uh, and I've done so many word reviews. Like, I have, like, 5,000 word documents of, of fucking data from Rank Solo Queue. But even if I didn't do all of that, like, in the first four rounds, we analyze... Can I trust my teammates? Are my teammates actually good? And how should I adapt my playstyle? You know, after the fourth round. And that's it. After the fourth round, you're asking yourself. Do I need to play more aggro? Can I risk my life a bit more for my teammates? Because they are really good at, I don't know, closing the rounds, winning the rounds, etc, etc. Essentially... What I'm trying, the, the point I'm making here is every single match of Valorant you start with a mindset uh, my teammates are mentally retarded until they prove me wrong. It is better to play with this mindset uh, in FPS tactical shooter uh, rather than playing with a mindset that your teammates are always going to do the most optimal and the best play at that moment of time. Because you only have one life, you have 150 health points, 100 health points like everyone else, we have the same guns, we have the problem of abilities in Valorant, and uh, you're really focusing the first four rounds to control the outcome of these rounds yourself by performing specific plays, uh, spe applying specific playstyle, etc., etc. And then after the fourth round, in the fifth round, you're like, okay, my teammates are actually good. You know, they are good. I can trust them. I can just support them and do whatever the fuck I, they, need, they need from me. Or, if your teammates are bad, you adapt to them and you figure out a specific way to play with them. Now, uh, Toku FPS, welcome to the stream, brother. Thank you for the tier 1 sub, baby. Uh, ooh. Do we have enough sub? Yeah. We Is that 50? Oh, we have 54 subs. Listen, guys. I'm going to make a giveaway on my Discord server uh, in uh, two hours from now. A giveaway for coaching and free VOD reviews. Make sure to t stay on the stream, like, uh, and make sure to join my Discord server. Like, we're making another co coaching giveaway. Uh, hello, Snowflexar. Okay, let's see what they do in this round. Now, on Icebox, uh, generally speaking, whenever you're playing an eco or hull by round, the best idea is to try to abuse the enemies and try to test the enemies in this area of the map. So, uh, basically... You know, uh, I don't know what to say, like, like uh, pushing a sight in eco rounds, halberd rounds, bonus rounds with uh, short-range weapons can be really hard. And uh, if I lose the first round, second round, I kind of always go... 
always go like uh, B or try to test the enemies on mid. And if I win the first round on A, then three rounds in a row I'm going to push the A side. Now, why three rounds in a row on A? Because that is the best pattern of pushing to create an unpredictable pattern of pushing to put enormous amount of mental pressure onto the enemies. I have explained this topic in every one review. Now, what is the best headset for Icebox? <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you think CS2 is harder than Valorant? I think... Uh, I don't know. Not really. I think Counter-Strike is not harder. Like, like, I think it is easier to go pro in Valorant than in Counter-Strike. Valorant is more complicated for newcomers than Counter-Strike. And I feel that at a top level, Valorant is more complex and harder than Counter-Strike. So basically, because of the abilities and all of this shit, like, uh, the game, you need a really good game knowledge in this game. While in Counter-Strike, like, you know, it, it's much more linear. But the problem is, like, I feel that uh, going pro in Counter-Strike is much, much harder than, than, than in Valorant right now. Like, Valorant is still fresh, you know, has a lot of room for new players and, and, uh, if you dedicate like two or three years to play this game, there is a better chance that you're gonna pro in Valorant, go, gonna go pro in Valorant than in CS2. While in CS2, like, you know, it's easier to pick up the game, in my opinion, especially if you're mechanically. It also depends what type of player you are. You know, do you like to use your brain or do you just love to shoot? You know, like if you're mechanically good, I think Counter Strike is a much better game for you than Valorant. But if you're good in terms of your game decisions and the way that you think, this is your game. I mean, right now, to be honest, I, I was a pro in CSGO. Like, uh, I think right now... I, 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 I think I'm not able to get uh, 2,500 Elon face it right now. Because my mechanics became so poor from Valorant. Like, mega poor. Like, uh, because there's so many things that you can do in Valorant that doesn't, don't rely on your mechanical skill. Uh, now, do you think CS2 is harder? Can I pay first six month plan and then get coached? The inspired plan is like six month plan and then I get coached or something because it's looking very interested, interesting. Uh, yes, Lanovic, man, like just, uh, um, join my Discord server. Contact me privately through the messages, and, uh, you know, that's it. We're gonna discuss on Discord. Join my Discord server, like, uh, contact me privately on Discord, and we're gonna talk about it. <clears throat> uh, many people complain it's now more difficult since new episode reset to grind for your old rank. But you kinda get really fast back. These rank resets are pointless in Valorant. Like, absolutely pointless. You have a high MMR... I don't know. You're gonna get back in... Less than 50 matches, like... I don't know, maybe even more? Less, like... Rank, rank resets are pointless in Valorant, like, that's not... I, I don't know, but... It, like, it's stupid. I, I talked about that in one of my videos. Will you give same tips if person being reviewed is bronze, for example? I mean, isn't it too advanced even for gold and people in low elo? Needs to work solely on mechanics. Uh, I coach every single player. Listen. So, I coach every single player in Valorant with a mindset like, uh, I want to install within your gameplay a good habits that are gonna carry your games even in Radiant ELO. So that you don't have a single moment of time during your grind where you're hard stuck in a specific ELO or rank for more than two or three months. So that means that I coach an Iron player and an Immortal player with the same mindset. That doesn't mean that I'm giving the same tips, same rules, same tricks, same solutions, same training to an Iron and an Immortal player. But that means that around 80% of the things that are shared between an Iron and Immortal player 
is kind of similar in some sense. Because there are certain tips, tricks, rules, solutions that you need to apply as soon as possible within your gameplay in a certain mindset and a certain playstyle. So basically, like, uh, that is why when I coach, let's say, a bronze player, I never focus on a bronze player only on his mechanics. Mechanics, you know, th there's a lot of problems. Yeah, of course, like, you know, you need to get good at aiming, you know. You need to kill the Radiant players. Like, uh, uh, once you get an Immortal 3, for an example. But uh, the problem with mechanical skill in this game is that uh, generally mechanics in Valorant are so poorly designed where even a player like Tenz can lose a duel against a gold player once in maybe like 50 times. Which is much more than in Counter-Strike, trust me. Like, uh, and second problem is RNG's mechanics. Like, there's a lot of bullshit happening in the game. Third problem of this game is that uh, uh, it relies more on the tactical aspect of, of the game. Like, this is not a first-person tactical shooter. This is a first-person tactical game. And that's how I look at Valorant. Like, shooting aspect is important, but uh, when you're grinding from Iron 1 to Immortal 3, mechanical skill, your mechanical skill, should only be 20% of your gameplay. That is carrying your matches and your rounds. But when you go from Immortal 3 to Radiant, 50% of your gameplay is reliant to your mechanical skill. So, you can say that, you know, all of the players that are below Immortal 3, I coach with a mindset, I just want to develop these players' game knowledge, game decisions, team play, and adaptiveness to the level where they can easily carry the games without relying on their mechanical skill. And to be honest, if I manage to get a bronze player to Immortal 3 in less than, let's say, half a year, that's a really fucking good improvement. Like, one thing that I really stay away from is uh, I coach a bronze player and I tell a bronze player, you know, just do this same training routine, focus on cross plays and focus on this and that's it. So, basically, like, uh, I think that that is a very bad advice. Mega bad advice. Like, uh, because this game is mega ta tactical game. Like, understanding the proper playstyle proper utility usage, proper, like, uh, way to play the maps, uh, to adapt to your allies' enemies is far more important. Especially because not everyone is good in terms of mechanical skill. Like, it varies from player to player. We all, we all have a different mechanical skill ceiling that some players will never breach. So basically, like, uh, uh, and I think 80% of Valorant community is is never going to be able to mechanically contest a Radiant Aim Demon. But that 80% of Valorant community can contest that uh, Radiant Aim Demon by abusing every other cheesy shit that exists in Valorant. Which is why I focus more on that rather than on mechanics. And it makes more sense. Because no matter how much aim training you do, like, different players have different skill ceiling. Like, and sometimes that's, like, literally, no matter what I do. Like, right now, if I train my aim, let's say for... for... six hours per day, every single day for one year, I'm still not gonna be mechanically better, than, let's say, Horkus, or let's say, Demon 1, like, or let's say, like, uh, Globex and, and Lover's Rock and these guys that have 60% headshot ratio with the Vandal. Like, no matter what I do, at my current skill level, even if I do 6 hours of fame training, I will never be better than them. Maybe I'm getting too old, you know, I'm 27, 28, like, uh, my mechanics are not like when I was 19 years old, or simply that is my skill ceiling, but also, in, you know, when I was like 22, I, I was never like aim demon, like, to be honest. And I was doing a lot of aim training. 
So that is why I love Valorant. Even though I hate this game. <laughs> like, uh, I love Valorant because not everything is shooting. No, actually, 80% of the gameplay is not shooting. So no one can contest people like Benji Fish. I didn't say no one can contest them. I said that 80% of community, no matter what you do, you won't be able to get to the level of, of uh, these players. Maybe that number is even higher. I, I don't know. To be honest. But whenever you see these exceptional aimers, chances are that they are just more gifted than you. And even if you put in the hard work, you know, hard work beats talent. But if the talent puts in the hard work, you're fucked as well. Like, you know, like... And that's why, you know, we're all different. Actually, th th this is another topic that we can discuss, like... Uh, uh, an another thing that I'm trying to find for players in my coaching sessions, I'm trying to find the player's uh, strength. That is also really important. Uh, mega important. Like, uh, we're, as I said, we are all different. Not everyone can play the game like I play it. And I cannot play the game like you play it. You know? Like, if I see in my coaching session that someone is... M has a mechanical potential. Or he is mechanically gifted. I, I'm not gonna force that player to play the same game that I play. I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna force that player to play a bit more aggro, to abuse the peaker's advantage, to hold angles less, and to basically, uh, you know, play on his strengths. I play on my strengths as well. You, you, you will never see me ever wide swinging a Horcus in a one versus one fight. Never. I cannot win that fight. But you will see me destroying the Horcus by <laughs> abusing some kind of a setup, some kind of an off angle, playing mind games and shit like that. Because that's my strength. Clutch potential, you know, and then playing on, on, on utility. Let's back to the We are at the second round, bro. Okay. Uh, forcing the Sheriff. Uh, it's okay. You know, you can do this if you plan the spike. But, uh, let me see his economy. So he forced the Sheriff and one more smoke. I mean, to be honest, on the attacker side, especially on Icebooks, I've stopped forcing the guns only because of one reason. If the enemy has the outlaw, and in the third round, you need to play a light with a Vandal, you're fucked. You know? And I play Outlaw 24-7 in the second round of Icebox on a defender's side, if I win the first round. So I would just recommend you to maybe go with a Shorty, if you plan the spike. One Shroud a step, and one Paranoia. And to try to go for some aggressive play, to potentially trade yourself for one or two kills. Or you don't need to buy a short, you can just go with a classic pistol. Like, but I don't know if I would for if I would force a sheriff in a in a second eco round. Since the outlaw is in the game. Mokro TTV! When I picked Radiant, uh, I noticed that the difference between Immortal 3 and Radiant is decision making. The side execution, for example, in Radiant is way more faster than Immortal 3. Every guy knows what he is doing. Aim is almost equal, but the rhythm and game system is different. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing that I didn't talk about. Like, uh, the, the main difference between an Immortal 3 player and a Radiant player is not mechanical skill. I, I really feel that. Uh, uh, I really feel that. Uh, a lot of these Immortal 1, Immortal 2 players, they are mechanically equal as Radiance. When I play against, you know, when I play these challenges and when I'm smurfing on my alternative accounts, bro, these guys are aiming even better than 50% than, than of Radiant players that I play against. But this, this, as, as you said, like, decision making, adaptiveness, uh, overall game knowledge, uh, rhythm that I play the game is very, very fucking poor. In Immortal 3. Like, people are just lost on the map. Like, uh, sometimes when I spectate, like, uh, some Immortal 2 Immortal 3 players, 
I'm like, bro, like, I, I don't know where, like, first of all, I don't know how, let me, let me showcase you something. Uh, just a second to find this. Uh, where did I share it? Just a second. I cannot leak my private DMs. So, um, I think Izot made this post. Oh, yo, 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 yo. I'm, I'm gonna showcase you something. No, never mind. If I find it, I'm, I'm gonna show you later. I see this one. Uh, there is Radiant players with Platinum mechanics. You're looking at one. <laughs> Listen, uh, first of all, what I want to ask you in this round is... Uh, you, bu you bought two smokes. And you use zero. I mean... Uh, if you, we already decided to buy two smokes and a sheriff, and my teammates are picking this angle, how is nothing like uh, smoked? Essentially, when you're pushing the B side of uh, Icebox, as soon one of your teammates crosses this line here, so one of your allies crosses this line, this smoke is going out of your hands instantly. Trial and smoke that is covering this. This and this, and the smoke that we can use to outplay the enemies and outmaneuver them at the backside or CT without being noticed from all of these angles. And then when your teammates are going for the execute, we're making a decision we either want to smoke the top of the site or we want to smoke this spot right here. Decision is purely yours based on, uh, you know, where you saw the enemies. Like, uh, usually, I don't know, like... Uh, it really depends. Uh, what is your economy, enemy's economy like? Uh, if the enemies are equal how by, maybe it is better to just do this smoke, do this smoke, and, uh, you know, flash the tower and that's it. Like, just hold the tower peak, kill the guy, plant the spike, and that's it. But, uh, depends on the economy, essentially. But this smoke is very important. And, uh, how the fuck we, we don't have this smoke. Palavrina! Thank you for the Prime Gaming sub, man, and thank you for scamming Jeff Bezos. Okay, yes, yes, Lenovic, man, like, I'll, I'll, I'll... Check it later. And, of course... I don't even need to say it. Like, uh... I'm about to be honest, like... That Sage kinda surprised you with the peak, like, uh, As he was dropping down... Sage went for the peak, but utility usage, zero points again. Refresh potential, zero points again. We need to play closer to our allies, and we need to push with our teammates. Grenade! And one, one more tip. Uh, I see this a lot of times. He is walking right now, and his teammates are running. Of course, this is the most obvious example of this problem. Like, why, why the fuck are you walking? If four of your teammates are running, you know, we're not keeping our location a secret. But uh, uh, another example would be like, uh, I see a lot of times like people say, Hey guys, let's play on contact, you know, like, uh, uh, let's play slow. And then one of your teammates makes a micro footstep. As soon as you make any, any sound, contact is over. Rush, fuck it. It's done. Like, it's a 50-50 chance that enemies heard that footstep. Or you're dropping the spike or some shit like that. Like, our location is revealed. We go in. But but here, obvious, like, I, I don't know why you, you were walking when your teammates are taking the fights and a little bit. I mean, what are you clearing, bro? Like, I mean, come on. <laughs> okay. First, for, oh, he wants to play outlaw. Okay, 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 okay. Now, on both attackers and defenders side of Icebox, you can play outlaw, you can play operator, uh, especially when you're pushing on both 
attacking defense. Like on this map, uh, it's very easy to abuse the snipers for some easy kills. Uh, especially if you have a good cross replacement and a good understanding where the enemies can be or if the enemies are repetitive. Okay, listen. Uh, whenever enemies are playing some kind of a bonus round or some kind of an eco or halby round, avoid this area of the map on Icebox. You don't need it. Like, you'll find much more success. Just, just do a 5-minute A push. And that's it. And remember this tip that I've given you. If you notice throughout the match that you're not using both smokes to execute a site, use your smoke in mid. Even if, not, even if none of your teammates are going through mid, it's gonna apply the mental pressure onto the enemies. And then in some of the future rounds, we can use that smoke to maybe... You know, outmaneuver the enemies, outplay them, and stuff like that. And whenever enemies are playing some kind of a bonus round, eco round, halby round, uh, avoid using any smokes uh, uh, that can fuck you up or fuck up your teammates. Just use the default smokes. Basically, my default setup for the A site is smoking this and smoking this essentially, and that's it. Or sometimes, what I love to do, I love to use a one-way smoke up here. So the enemies cannot peek at all from the rafters. Now, uh, even without this smoke, you can push into the bomb site. One smoke that I never use, and I see a lot of the players, a lot of the people would require it, would advise you, advise you to use this smoke is this smoke here. This smoke here, eighty percent of times is just a waste. Like, first of all, nobody guarantees you that you will even push through this area of the map right here. And we need the, the cover from as many angles as possible. Second of all, while you're pushing at the backside, depending when you did that smoke, that smoke might already disappear. So, this smoke is a necessity, kinda. And every other smoke really depends where you see the enemies and what you wanna do. Yeah, just... Shotan, is true stretch good? I really feel... I tried it. I really feel it's a placebo effect. I don't know. I don't play better because of the stretch resolution. If you feel... Test... Try it for yourself. If you feel it's better for you to play on stretch resolution, play on stretch. If you feel it's not better for you, don't play on it. Th those are the things that you need to try. You know, for yourself. Like, uh, I truly believe it's more of a placebo effect than anything else, to be honest. Like, uh, uh, I, I aim, I play significantly better on a native resolution. Because I can notice the targets easier. I can uh, notice the colors easier on the screen, and that's it. Food Bunch, we're doing vote review. Piscar! Piscar! Thank you for the one sub. Oh, yo, 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 listen. Listen, whenever enemies are, I don't know, in, in a numbers disadvantage, uh, we are playing some kind of an anti-eco, anti-bonus round, like... Uh, don't do this. Like, this type of a setup, uh, it's okay to do it to, if we're playing some kind of an eco round with a stinger, shorty, classic pistol, trying to outplay the enemies, outmaneuver them. But we want to see enemies right now. We want to contest them in a clean gunfights. You know? Aren't the models the same size because of FOV is the same? Yes. It's placebo. It's really placebo. Okay. Uh, Mega Giga... Oof, I almost said the N-word, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, Mega Giga tip, right here. Listen, if one guy, if, if one enemy is behind you, and that enemy is lurking, flanking, and he kills one of your teammates, always focus Primarily on your and your teammates don't have a bomb site control. Always focus primarily on your teammates that are aggressive and picking up the fights with the enemies in the choke point. 
and deal with that enemy later. Because look what happened here. So we were pushing a site. I'm gonna completely ignore the smoke setup here. And our Phoenix died on mid. Right now. Right now. Uh you don't know if Reyna is gonna continue this push or not. That's the problem number one. So right now, by watching the flank, we're not really 100% certain if, if uh, we're wasting the time or not. But instead of that, in these type of scenarios, it is much better to path together with your teammates, be aware of a possibility that Reyna can be behind, Take the side control and then punish the Reyna later. Or if you're, if all of your teammates want to go back and punish the Reyna, then do it together. But here, you know, your your your, your utility usage is improper, way too slow, and you need to be more focused on refer potential. And the second pro problem is like, you know, we are wasting our time right now. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Reyna is gonna push this, like, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a 50-50 chance, but uh, I'm not willing to take a 50-50. It is much better for me to kill the raise with a Bakio on sight, to kill the, to refrag my raise, to play with my teammates, open the A site, plant the spike, and then deal with the Reyna later. Uh, and also, why did your raise die right now? Because of your smoke setup. I've never said in my videos, coaching videos, that this setup should be your default setup uh, for pushing a site. Like this is setup that we use sometimes to outmaneuver the enemies with a close range weapons, or to outplay the enemies. But this is never us. Don't this is we don't do this uh, when enemies are playing an eco halby or bonus round. Never. Now we are kind of wasting time here. Oh, actually, okay. Reyna decided to Take just care. run forward. Okay, let's see how the round goes. Oh, she, did, she didn't pick up the... She had the outlaw. Yeah, listen. When you're taking <coughs> map control slowly like this, your utility, you know, kind of gives away your position. Basically, like, right now, instead of doing this smoke for the kitchen, like, first of all, this smoke doesn't do anything. It's just a waste of the smoke and what the fuck is that? But right now, it would have been ten times better if you did a smoke in the screens here to make the enemies think that you're still committing to the A push and to potentially waste some time for the enemies while you're trying to get the kitchen control and trying to get the B-side control. Like, where do you place the smokes? That kind of reveals to the enemies like where you are at that moment of time. You know, like, 80% of Valorant players are autopiloting and when they see some smoke they're gonna be very cautious about that certain position, and they're gonna think in a specific direction. Bro, if I saw this smoke, you know, I, I know you're going kitchen, or I'll, I mean, I would pre assume that you're trying to do something around the kitchen and to going towards the B site. And it, it was unnecessary utility. Like, what, our sage is walking, let's walk together through the tube with the sage, let's play the refray game. Easy win. Manu, thank you all for the tier 1 sub, baby. Yeah, it, um, yeah. Oh, what the fuck, Viper? Platinum elo, Viper. Okay. We play slow and everything is fine. Enter the site, please, okay? And okay, enemies have one down. Go from to be honest, on, on Icebox... Uh, if enemies uh, don't have one teammate, I would just be doing a five man pushes on A set and B set. I I don't know. 
I, 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 I wouldn't even touch the mid area of the map. To be honest. Maybe if, if five man pushes are not working, but... Uh, like... Why? You know? Yeah. It's six in advance, Papito. Bro. This is... Ah, that's what... For six... Wait, 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 wait. Ah, th there is a difference between that shit... Subscribe for two months in a row for six months. I, I, bro, I, I've been streaming for four years and I I didn't know there was a difference between like different Your subs. <laughs> <going out>. yes. <laughs> oh my God, go from here. Okay. Here on my smoke, I smoke going out. Yes. Okay. Let's learn. You know, next time when we play Icebox, let's learn how to put our utility while we are still playing with our teammates. You know, you're playing Omen. One of the main benefits of Omen from other controllers is that you're able to move and to place your smokes far across the map. Of course, you can do that with Astro, but you cannot move at all. So, if I'm starting the push on Icebox onto the A site, Let's pre-place the first smoke that I want to do. Uh huh. I want to do this smoke. You know. Then, let's move on to the belt. Do this. In the fir first five seconds of the round. I'm here. Two smokes are placed. Of course, there's no reason to put these two smokes immediately. I, I don't know why would you even put the smokes this fast. Like, basically, the smoke for the... The smoke for the elbow... Screens, sorry. The, the smoke for the screens. The smoke you should do, like... Maybe when your teammates are, like... Here. When they're here. When you're, you know, peeking from the belt. Or maybe you're there. Th th that's when you do that smoke. I don't know why would you th do that smoke first. And this fast. Like, the first smoke can maybe be... Smoke for the rafters. You know. First smoke can maybe be a one-way smoke up here. First smoke can maybe be a smoke for this position. If your teammates are dying way too many times from the jet chamber that is sniping them from this spot. It's a gold platinum elo. This is the only way to help them out. Because a lot of times gold and platinum players don't, don't listen. But doing this immediately as the first smoke in the first two seconds of the round is going to disappear, man. Like, you know... It's not gonna be used. Oh my god, I got my Yeah, easy can happen, bro. Don't worry. Papito, if you remember, you coached me in May 2023. I was Platinum 3, now I have 5 accounts on Immortal 3. And my best peak was place 613. Manu. I don't know, man. You, would, you, you wouldn't believe how many players I coached in 2023. Like, in 2023, I coached more players than ever. I don't remember you, man. What's your Discord name? Take care, take care. Yeah, easy can happen, bro. Don't worry. Ah, KG Mado. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, now, now I remember. Now I remember. I remember that I coached someone with that name, yeah. Uh, listen, listen guys, listen, listen here. I mean guys, listen, you death, uh, you, 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 omen, masterclass player. So, when you're teleporting there, towards the belt. So, if you don't have a confidence to clear these angles, or you don't have a proper gun to contest enemies on all of these positions, with omen, you can always use a teleport like this, to scout the enemies, and to basically go into the safety. But, please, teleport deep into this corner, jump, scout the enemies, you know, use use the shroud steps safely, and as a recon tool. I'm sorry, like, my mouse still doesn't want to jump, man. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get rid of... I, I swear to God. We're gonna do a live stream where we demolish this mouse together. Like, I'm, I'm gonna 
find some kind of a press or some kind of a hammer and I'm gonna destroy it myself. The worst fucking piece of shit I've used in my life. Like in less than two months, months, six problems with a mouse. And one more thing that I want to add to your gameplay is that uh, you really need you really need to like stop using this setup 24/7. Like this setup, maybe in the first round, not bad. Uh, in eco rounds, hull by rounds, bonus rounds, uh, when your teammates are ag bad on the attacker side, maybe you can use this setup to outplay the enemies and do something with it. But doing this setup 24/7, bro. What mouse is that? Uh, G, G Wolf's uh, HTX4 4K, like uh, bro. Take care, Daisy. By the news, Zowie, uh, I've ordered the Ultralight X large one, and it's gonna be probably delivered uh, in three years from now. You know, final mouse. Yeah. Wait, 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 just play quiet, don't rotate. There are some here, but no worry. Okay, okay, we can do that. We can do that. Not, not a bad idea. What he said right now, I'm gonna translate what he said. Guys, let you know, try not to complicate your communication to the enemies, to your teammates. Tell them, wait guys, cut the noise for 20 seconds, let's reheat the side. That's what he wanted to say. Uh, that was a really good idea, we're keeping our teammates in check. If you did a rotation right now, like... We don't know if the enemies are behind us, which angles they picked, uh, and uh, especially in the lobbies below Immortal 3, and even in Radiant, people don't really check all of the possibilities where the enemies can and cannot be. It happens quite a lot, even for Radiant players. Like, uh, uh, and uh, this is a good callout for solo queue, very good that we cut the noise, we're waiting for enemies to make a mistake, uh, pushing together. Not bad, very good. Take care. Uh, okay, we have the headset, we have the eyes, even if the sage didn't give you a com, where is the enemy raise? You're not blind and you're not deaf. Come on, we know the, the raise is there, she has the ultimate, we need to use a paranoia, and we need to... Uh, we need to like... Uh... No, no, no. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even give a comment uh, on the end of this round like uh, I don't know how do you space out How did you space so much like uh, in, in this round man? Yes, how are we doing today? Very good man. Very good uh, So yeah No, no I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna... Uh, next one, next one, next one, next one. You know, I smoke here, and I smoke for tower, okay? Okay, enemies are back. Shadows traveling. Be at peace. Cover going. Shadows traveling. Be at okay, listen, when you're putting the smoke uh, in the CT... Uh, so that is your default smoke for the... b set push. R really try to make sure that you connect... Uh, this, with this, with this. Why is this important? You're done with rank for today. From now on, we're playing ranked after the reviews. So, the smoke should look something like that, essentially. Uh, why? The reason is like, uh, if you want to path through this smoke, you're able to do it without being noticed from the other side. And everything is, you know, covered. It can probably look a bit better towards the left side, but you, you get the idea. Another benefit of this smoke is, uh, you know, with Omen, this smoke already gives you one uh, aggressive play, which is basically teleporting here as a default play, and then peeking the enemies and fighting them together with your teammates from the another position. So if your teammates are peeking from here, you can peek from here and take the side control. Uh, beca because of, when I'm playing Omen on Icebox, uh, one of the reasons why I don't do a smoke here is because... I kinda, you know, as my default play, I kinda use my paranoia and utility in this way, where I want to fight the enemies here. You know, I want to pick the enemies from this position to use a paranoia to 
I don't know. But it really depends on, on, on our situation and scenario. My ultimate's ready. You need to learn to play faster with your teammates. If your teammates are pressing a W key, you need to press a W key as well. If you're doing the smokes, move towards your allies, play with them. Okay. It is kinda unacceptable for this elo how much you're allowing your teammates to go in front of you and you're not able to refrag them at any moment of time. I say it's good pick. My ultimate's ready. And of course, stop using these uh, fast smokes immediately at the start of the round. Wait a bit. You know, the first smoke for the B site should go from your hands when we clear this angle and when we clear this angle. Then we do the smoke for the cross. Then we do the smoke for the tower or, you know, for this position here. Like, your sm your sm all of your smokes are disappearing. Before you even push into the side. What heal is this like? Gold 3, Platinum 1, something like that. Okay. Mm, here, I don't know, man. Like, this comes more with experience and comes more with the playtime. But uh, if I have a smoke for the CT, I have a smoke for the site. I have a Viper smoke here. My Sage is impersonating a Yoru clone. Like, uh, you know, teleporting on top of this wall here would have been such a good play, man. Like, pro from this off angle, I mean from that position, you, you, you would probably get like one, two or three kills. But... Uh, in order to make this place, you need to, you know, have some playtime, some experience. You need to realize that this place actually exists. And in order for you to abuse a certain opportunity, you need to realize that a certain opp opportunity actually exists for you. Like, I don't know if my sage is in this death sentence corner alone. Like, what I'm thinking in my head is how the fuck can I support that sage and use her for anything? And if I have a CT smoke, combined with a tower smoke, combined with a viper smoke, easy TP on the on top of the sage wall from that elevated position, trying to get a few picks, and that's it. Take care, Allah Akbar. Rotating. Let's go. Wait, guys. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, now, uh, in this round, I feel it is much better for us to continue fighting on B rather than rotating. And in this round, what I would call to my teammates is once again to cut the noise for 20 seconds. Why 20 seconds? Uh, usually around 20 seconds uh, is when players' uh, focus in Valorant significantly drops down. You know, when the players are holding the angles or they're playing on the site, uh, they're prone to make some kind of a mistake. And uh, the reason why I wouldn't rotate here is because of the Sage ultimate. Like, they can easily revive the Reyna. This can easily go into a maybe 5v4, 5v3 situation. Like, you need to call this type of shits. Yes, or rotate, let's go. All here. How do you know they're... How do you know that they're all there? Thanks God, this is like gold, platinum, elo, so the sage is like, nah, fuck the, rev fuck the revive, bro, like, let's, let, let's, let's pick bottom mid and let's die. I, I'm not playing sage, I'm playing like, Reyna. Nice, Please, if you, if you have time to plant the spike on a proper post plant position, and the best post plant position for a specific site, always do it. It's, it's not gonna hurt you. Depends on which scenario you are, but, you know, on the... On the A side, like, uh, you usually want to plant the spike, as I said, just a second, what the fuck is going on? Why? Aha, uh -huh, spike. Here, here, or here. On B side, 
you usually want to plant the spike here, open here, depending, you know, from which angle you're holding the spike, uh, here, and uh, everything else depends, you know, where the fuck you're playing the post plant. But uh, tucking the spike deep here, why? Like, your teammates are rotating. If you die, right now from the Viper that is maybe on the site, I mean, she's not on the site, but, uh, you know, if maybe someone is magically on the site, like, your teammates cannot defend the spike from the belt, blah, 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 blah. I can't smoke, just wait. Especially because his teammates were rotating and, you know, like, all of them are on the belt in the aiming area of the map, like, planting open for the belt and main. Okay, uh, uh, good play. Cover going out. Okay. I don't know. You know, when you have numbers advantage, like, uh, you need to respect numbers a bit more. And respect the refrag game. Like, you are, bro, like, my guy makes a numbers advantage. He's like, 5 versus 3, 5 versus 2, 4 versus 2. Nah, man, I, I need to fight. I'm- If I don't fight right now... My whole family dies. Chill, bro. Look, you know, re relax. Let the enemies... Maybe tap the spike. Let the enemies need to clear so many angles. But they, they are- They are under pressure. They need to clear the backside, underside. They need to clear... 4th end generator, pipes, uh, top of the site, uh, tap the spike, like, let them waste some time, like, and then pick, you know, hold some angle. When the enemies are pressing the W key, bam, pick them. You know, maybe play around the pipes. When the enemy is clearing the site, or, you know, like, uh, when the enemy is pathing to this position, jiggle, pick, pop, delete that enemy, wait for the ra race to tap the spike, bam, paranoia, kill the race, done. I mean, yeah, we have a paranoia, actually, as well. They own the One enemy Absolutely unnecessary, I mean. Yes, you got two kills. If you played any other agent, those two kills would actually mean something for the ultimate. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. Okay, listen. Whenever, but literally whenever, you're pushing the site from top of the belt, from is is from yeah from a belt, uh, always place your crosser like this. Then check below you there, and then move forward. You never know if the enemy jet raise somebody, use the ropes, jumped up there like with the omen. We also have the instant teleport from this position, like this. Round starts, bam. I'm already on the belt killing you. Place your crosser for this. That doesn't hurt. And this teleport will definitely cost your life a lot of the times. It's totally fine to teleport on, in deep into the, you know, elbow there in the pipes. Like, uh, to take additional space and stuff like that, but you need to do it, essentially, you know, like that. Do you still believe that Omen and Jet are the best two agents to push from Immortal Ascendant to Radiant, even with this map pool? I never, I never said that, uh, uh, Omen and Jet are the best to reach Radiant. I just said that the Omen and Rays, Omen, Omen Jet and Rays, are the S plus tier agents to grind ranked in Valorant. For all of the ranks. Like, the thing is, when you're Immortal 3, up to Radiant, you need to play more agents, you know, 6-7 different characters, depending on the map and stuff, like... Uh, um, I mean, last act I played a fucking Killjoy, Cypher, Chamber, Jet, Sova, Omen, Brimstone, Sky. I played like 15 characters. Uh, but I still believe that Omen, Jet, and Rays are still the S plus tier agents for players' solo improvement and for ov overall grinding of the ranks in Valorant. And yes, Jet is still very fucking powerful and very fucking good on majority of the maps, Omen as well, uh, for solo queue. 
So yeah. I, I'm satisfied. One month plan from Silver, how much do you improve? Uh, I coached the death. Uh, I'm, everyone is different. Like, I, I cannot tell you that. Take care. They're here. They're here. Shadows uh, death smoke is falling down. Circle is, you know, pay attention to the triangle, please. Remember, remember one rule when you're playing Omen. Precision of your smokes is far more important than the speed of your smokes. Smoke that is not precise will cost you the round far more than the smoke that is slower and precise. Like, this smoke is gonna... I don't know. And please stop using the same setup 24-7, man, like, chill a bit, bro. Like, you, when you're playing Omen, you adapt your setups based on your teammates, based on the enemies, based on the map that you're playing, and based on the economy. How are we using this setup, like, every round? Okay, that paranoia there onto the sage, I'm gonna give you one explanation. So that paranoia was obviously bad. In this specific case scenario. Like, uh, because we don't know where are the enemies. And uh, we don't know, you know, where their sage is gonna pick a fight. But sometimes, I do use a paranoia onto my teammates. And on to the enemies, if I think that I'm gonna get an easy kill while making my teammates stay alive. So you shouldn't be afraid to blind your teammates if you think the result of the fight is gonna work in your favor. But doing it like this when your teammate is already on the site exposed from jabillion angles, you have no idea where are the enemies, you used a very fucked up setup for this round, Oi, oi, oi. You want to teleport there? Listen, uh, if your idea... <coughs> so let, let me, let me... Z Z Z Z Zendaya! <laughs> Welcome to the stream! Um, yesterday I played two ranked games, I was about to cry to be honest. Yesterday I played like five matches, so Valorant... Uh, I'm telling you guys, uh, the first seven days of an act, don't even play it. Like, I don't know, go play Swift Play. You know, maybe you meet some e-girls there and then your future wife. But, to be honest, if your future wife is playing Swift Play, I don't know. Listen, uh, if your idea is the following. So, I want to execute a set of ice books and I want to go on top of the rafters right here. So, this is the ending position. Where you want to go. It is much easier and much better to do this type of a setup. So, I want to go there to outplay the enemies and potentially take a space control for my team. We go here. From this position, we're using this smoke. We're using this smoke. We're clearing that angle, angles, dropping down, clearing this, clearing the pipes, clearing that. We're using the paranoia. For the right side and for the back side there, bam. And then from this position, we're teleporting there. We're fully hidden from the enemies below us. This is flashed, this is flashed. We have a cover. And the only spot from which enemies can kill us is the back side here. Which is a gamble I would take. You know, it's highly unlikely that one enemy is gonna just be chill there in the middle of nowhere while he can get pushed from here, here, and there. So with this setup, okay, you know, we can do this teleport. But if you don't have this smoke, I don't think teleport on the rafters is worth it at all. It's it's 50-50 play, which I wouldn't do. Got it, got it. Yo, just uh, uh, Ryuven, well, see, man. Bro, I don't know. I like doing vote reviews at the start of the stream, to be honest. 
and the, the, like from now on, I'm gonna be doing the guides and what reviews and talking with you guys at the start of the stream for like one or two hours, and then we're gonna play the ranked games. When I play ranked games, I'm 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 done with life, man. Uh, okay. Ooh, okay. Scheiße. Yeah. Ich liebe. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Okay, I know that uh, in my coaching, uh, exclusive coaching videos, I've shared that, uh, you know, now because of the map redesign. Let me explain it simply. Because of the map redesign, I would never teleport anywhere here on the attacker's side. I, I would never do this type of shit. I would never waste a TP to go there, to go there, nothing, nada. Like, just. You know, jump spot the enemies, press forward. Jump spot the enemies, bam. Clear this angle, this angle, jump spot the enemies, press forward. I don't know, waste, uh, risky, why the fuck would we do this, you know? Uh, Omen. Where are the smokes, Omen? Suka. Ay, 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 ay. Bro, if, if, if your teammates are all already at the back of the yellow, picking the fights with the enemies, we need to have a smoke for the CT and the backside, man. Like, uh, you, you need to put more focus on doing the smokes to support your, uh, doing your utility to, su to support your allies a bit better. Like, based on your teammates' positioning and your positioning, depends which smoke we are doing and where. How? How is this always visible for you? What's happening here? Is there an option in Valorant to always show your teammates loadout? What the fuck is this shit? Is this a bug? Always show him if there's... What? I, I didn't even know this option exists, bro. Man, to turn this off, bro... <laughs> Turn this off, man. I literally didn't know. Why would anyone use this, man? I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm like, like, is, is he dead? Like, like, uh, and I'm like, what the fuck is this shit, bro? Like, he, he doesn't even see Sage here. Because of this man. Like, what is this, bro? No, no, I, I'm death. Bro, I coached you for I coached you for two months. For one month. We did one month coaching. I've literally made all of the settings for you. Why did you change the settings? Like, what the fuck, bro? Take care of my head. Yeah, guys. Take care of my head. Yeah, guys. Take care of my head. You died from flank? No, you didn't die from flank. Where did he die from? Take care of my head. Ay, 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 ay. That timing of the peak was really good, man. That timing of the peak is really, really good. Ah, this is the second. Okay, okay, okay. That guy is flanking. Okay. We need to speed run. We need to speed up this what review a bit more. Like uh, I'm already doing this for two hours, man, and we've done six rounds. <laughs> Bro is making his games harder on purpose. M my dude loves to play uh, uh, uh Don't be scared of them. Let's go A and have full attack. Change your small setups, please. Based on your economy, thank you. 
we need to play a bit closer to our allies. Thank you. you ooh, if you jump from here, minus 15. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, always clear. Listen, 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 listen. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a fuck what you're doing. If you are going through this position, I expect from you to clear the top of the tower. I don't give a fuck how many enemies you're fighting. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. I need you to clear this shit for me. Done. If you die from that position, you, you deserve to... If nobody cleared that spot, and you were not observing a possibility for an enemy to be there, or you didn't spam that position, you deserve to lose that round. And I don't give a fuck. Oh. This teleport, I don't know what was this. Please don't teleport in the middle of nowhere. We have a very strict positions where we can and where we cannot teleport. When we are executing something, in all of my VOD reviews, in all of the coaching videos, in the rank playbook, I explain specifically where you can... What are the best, optimal, and the worst spots to do an omen teleport. My friends hate this default smoke. These smokes that he is doing right now are the smokes that you use only in, maybe in the first round and only if you're playing an eco hull by round or when you have a close range weapons. You don't use these smokes, uh, you don't use these smokes like uh, when, when, uh, in every, I, I don't know, like I use these smokes maybe. One time per match. On the attacker's side. I don't know why he stuck to this setup like so many times. Nice, good job, good job. Yeah. There, it's, it's not a good job. It's not a good job. You, you clear that angle. Okay, rotate, rotate. Give me spike, give me spike. Give me spike, I have good spike. Make noise, make noise. Very bad game decision. Very bad game decision. Why are you pussy? Why are you pussy? Why do we complicate the rounds? We are 4 versus 2. Enemy Sage has a, a revive. We know that both enemies are on A side. Like, uh, let's kill them. What's the problem? We have Deadlock Ultimate, Raze Ultimate, we have Paranoia, we're all full HP to some degree. You're minus 15. But what's the problem? Why are we scared? Now when I rotate onto B site. Yes, you're gonna play in the spike for free. But. Deadlock can die alone. Raze can pick a 1v1 fight. Sage can revive. Voila! In a matter of seconds. From a 4 versus 2 scenario. You make a 2 versus 3 scenario. Let's see how this works. Maybe, I mean, they will probably win this round. I don't know. Come rotate, come rotate, guys. And also, I, I I don't know where is the Viper. I don't know if they saw the Viper on the site. Maybe Viper is still B. One teammate down. Good plant. That was a really, really good plant because uh, uh, his teammates can see the spike from the mid. Cover going out. Okay, we're allowing our teammates to play alone. Everyone is playing alone. Nobody is playing together in a post plant. Splendid. We are three versus three. Okay, Sage is still there. In the post plans, ask yourself what is your win condition. If you don't have a win condition, such as a one-way smoke, lineups, uh, ultimate, etc., etc., uh, always play with the most aggressive teammate that has the highest chances of dying. Unfortunately, at this moment of time, that is race. Uh, and, but I, I, I wouldn't play with my race, obviously. But I would definitely follow my sage. I would play with the sage in the kitchen. And uh, I would try to refrag my sage at all costs. Playing this spot here and allowing the sage to die. And also, another problem of yours is 
you're playing such an overexposed position. Enemies can be in the city. Enemies can be in the kitchen. Enemies can be behind you. This is a terrible postman position. Like, uh, basically, in this situation, you just play with the siege in the kitchen. Like, if none of your teammates are holding the flank, none of your teammates in the B main, you have no business here. No business at all. No, no, no. This position is like a Greek's economy. Like, most of the times, you're gonna have a negative KD from this spot. So basically, like, uh, you know, in the your, po your post plans are always adapted based to, like, uh, uh, you know, based on uh, what your teammates are doing. And that's it. If, if all of my teammates are playing here, maybe, you know, we can play on top of here and try to snipe the enemies coming through the CT if I have the cover from the flank. But playing here, that sentence. That last round, completely and absolutely unnecessarily complicated round. <laughs> okay, at least. Uh, do you know yeah, something I don't know? To surrender, guys. What the? Guys, we are not here. This is no is pity part. Uh... Wait, wait. Does he know something that I don't know? What the fuck? Who want to surrender, guys? Guys, we are not here. Why, why outlaw? I mean, why light shield and outlaw? This easy win. Yeah, that look is trash. That's normal. I need this bone. I mean, if, if, you know, forcing the outlaw on the attacker side of Facebook is fine. You know, you can play outlaw, you can play bulldog. Bulldog is probably the the best half by force by weapon, like uh, bulldog or guardian and, and outlaw as well. First of all, okay. Let's say in this round... What the fuck? Who want to surrender, guys? Let's say in this round, I wanted to buy Outlaw specifically, because... Like, when do I buy the Outlaw on the attacker side of any map? Or of Icebox and Breeze, because those are the only maps where I play Outlaw on the attack. I buy the Outlaw when I see that enemies uh, don't have enough money for the heavy shield and good weapons. Like, enemies have, like, below... 3,500 credits, like three or four of those guys. Yeah, you can go with the outlaw. Uh, now, let's say I have 3,600 credits and I want to buy outlaw in this round. I'm buying outlaw, buying heavy shield, and uh, I'm buying smoke. Fuck it. It's better for you to have a heavy shield than utility. Like, because shields and guns, you know, we need the fights, essentially, like, uh, and uh, having two smokes and a paranoia is more than enough to win this round. If you already want to play Outlaw and prioritize the long-range fights. But also, you know, I will buy the Outlaw if the call is, hey guys, let's push A, hey guys, let's push B. But if the call is, hey guys, let's push mid, or let's split the, you know, let's go mid. I don't, you know, Outlaw not really the best shit ever here. Nice Phoenix. Enemy down. Good job. Fire. Take care, allow Akbar. Enemy spotted me. Okay, man, listen, like, if, if, uh, if, uh, one enemy is already pressuring your teammates from top mid, you know, from this, uh, uh boiler position, brother, teleport in the corner. Right here, they never see your teleport in this corner. You don't need any smoke, nothing. Just kill them. Cut the rotation. Now let's, you know, drop down, teleport, let's do something else. That's an easy kill. Why would I fight this headshot angle with the outlaw when I can see half of the ray's body if I teleport on this elevated position? But we can also do a headshot there. Yeah. Is right Easy, man, for you. I mean, no matter what you're doing uh, in life, uh, 
you're receiving a blowjob. Crosshair is always placed. You know, at the most probable angle from which you can die. I know that you're still doing the training that I've shared with you. I know it's only been a few days, few weeks, like there's still a long, you know, period of time where you need to do the training that I share with you, but I need to consistently remind you about the problems that you have so that you focus more on these problems in game. Like it is unacceptable that we did our coaching and you're still doing this. Like walking sideways without your crosshair being placed there. Oh, fuck. One enemy remaining. Okay, plant A, plant A. But I understand. I understand, like. I understand. You're still, you know, you, you just started doing the training, like, uh, we've saw some significant improvements. I mean, you went from, like, Bronze 3 to almost Platinum 1, you know, in, in, in a month, month and a half, like, uh, it's okay. It's, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Like, uh, as long as we get you to the level of, I don't know, Ascendant and Diamond players, uh, in the next two to three months, I'm 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 good. Even though I, I think it's, it can be even fast. But what am I? Why am I watching a fucking stage? Just remember, if if you already want to push mid on ice books, maybe having a double penis gun is not a good idea. I think it's much better to have like a, you know, squirting gun, which is bulldog, or guardian. If you already don't have money for vandal and light shield, vandal heavy shield. <laughs> oh, got a bit of a cancer there. <laughs> let me let me see it again. <laughs> Crosser, crosser, or or how how Mr. L L Lowlanders says it like uh, cr crosser, crosser, crosser everywhere. Listen here, man. We are clearing the A site uh, of Icebox uh, through the belt. Crosser up here, clearing this angle, this angle. We are observing. A possibility that enemies can be here, 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 here. For the enemies that are there and there, we're using the down flicks to kill them. Then our crosser goes down here for the headshot angle. Why? It is harder to hit this than hitting an enemy here and here. Then our crosser goes up that, that, that position. Then our crosser goes down because this is more common than this. Then from this position, Crosser up, up, right, forward. You will never see me clear aim and area of the map from the belt in any other way. And this is the most efficient and effective way to do it. When it comes to crosser placement. Is picking belt on attack really, like, really bad? No, 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 it's not bad. I do it. I, I pick the belt, uh, especially with Operator, Outlaw, but crosshair placement is very important. Like, there's so many off angles, so many positions where enemies can play, and you need to clear these angles properly. So that you don't need to do so, so many flicks, micro-corrections, uh, relying on your reaction time and shit like that. Who here? Look, look, look at this, he's just scrolling through the... Like, this, this is his crosshair, like... like uh, the heart rate monitor, man. There can be some more. Don't push. Don't push. Don't push. Oh, yo, yo. I have the suit. Nice, strong plant spike. Plant spike. Reloading. I'm not gonna talk about his smokes anymore. Nice try, but actually, actually, it's really good that he didn't teleport there because there's no reason to go there, and it was way too dangerous. Yeah, we can play passively with this, to be honest. Enemy spotted mid. But uh, you always play with your most aggressive teammates. This is what I call wasting time in Valorant. 
Like right now your siege can die. Actually, the siege is hidden from the wall. Okay, okay, okay. One enemy but she can die from fate. Last one loves to come heaven. Okay. Nice. Just follow the rule. Support your most aggressive teammates. You don't need to die for them. And you don't need to die with them. Just make sure that you have at least a potential to refrag them. I swear, man, you used to this smoke all the time, previous size box. No, I, I didn't use it all of the time, man. But there's no way. You know, this is a default smoke. Cover going out. But I change my setups like based on what type of shit I want to do. You know, I sometimes use this smoke, Shadows. sometimes use this smoke, sometimes this, this, this one way here. And these are the one, two, three, four, five, six. Six modes that we have. The most important one is this one here. And everything else is just improvisation. But this setup, this and this, I, I don't use 24-7. Because it, it's a very dangerous setup when the enemies are eco, halby, and bonus. And also like an unnecessary setup. And also, even in the full by rounds, like, I mean... There's other aggressive options such as, you know, teleporting there, teleporting there, like uh, um, ag aggressing the enemies from the 4th end generator with one smoke. <clears throat> I, I get I got flamed for using the smoke in left back side. And where should you do it? Here, where it doesn't cover anything. And the enemies can kill me from the back side while I'm trying to clear the site. Why is this smoke better than this smoke? All right, let's have that debate. Like, because I see uh, some, you know, these, these, uh, these, like, uh, you know, Joel's will maybe recommend you this smoke. Like, if, if, I, if I'm clearing the site, and I'm pathing you through the site, I need to clear this, this, that, this, this, and this. Am I am I a magician? Just smoke. One by one. One by one. Bam. You know. Bam. 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 Now I can maybe outplay the enemies. Maybe like. Bah, 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 bah. Maybe something, you know? Fuck it. Anyways, we need to fight for the backside control later. Oh, it's silver gold. Okay, okay, okay. Just make two rounds and Listen. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I say to like, uh, so whenever I coach players that are like uh, below Immortal 3, because Immortal 3 players and Radiant, yeah, it's okay. Like, but if you're, if you're below Immortal 3 and you use some kind of a setup that I recommend you, your team has flame you for that setup, you tell them to suck your cock. And to actually learn to play the game. Actually, don't do that. Just ignore them. Like, if your teammates are blaming you for some setup... ...that you've seen from me. If it works for me, and works for 95% of the players that I've coached... ...and even more... ...and if they are hard stuck in fucking Ascendant and Immortal... ...for the last four years... Opinion invalid. And then it's fine, bro, okay? We have this easy. Shadows traveling. Take care, can be a nest to go rope. Shadows traveling. Yo, mental legs, best spokesman. Take care, half of them is. Spike down A. If another. Radiant player, Radiant coach, or a pro player says that a certain setup is shit, then I'm up for debate. Someone take pick up spike, please. Not big, big enough. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Take care, half of them is... Okay, that's listen, like, just, just, uh, 
watch the videos that I've shared with you, like, uh, try to apply the variety in your setups, like, uh, we have seven, six, seven different smokes on the A set of Icebox, you don't need to use the same shit over and over again. Spike down. And also, and also, like, uh, also, uh, whenever your teammates are crossing this sector, so at least one of your teammates is on, on the top of the fourth end generator, or your teammates are moving like this, always give them the paranoia for the right side. Like, I do this paranoia, like, I don't know, 8 out of 10 times. Just to disallow enemies to pick my teammates behind the box, to clear this, clear this. It's very important for you to time this paranoia properly, as your teammates are taking the side control. And every other paranoia is, like, just improvisation. On B set as well, like, uh, you know, my default paranoia is usually paranoia for the site and tower, something like this, you know, but I don't really have any set in stone paranoias that I do on this map. Like, the only set in stone paranoia is kind of this. Everything else is just improvisation based on where I see the enemies, where I need to outplay them and, you know. Sure. I think that during this match, uh, you overcomplicated a lot of the rounds on the attacker side. Like, uh, a lot of the times when you should not have rotated, you rotated. And uh, that kind of could have costed you a lot of rounds. Here, for example, my deadlock is on site. We are three versus two. My deadlock has the ultimate. Uh, why? You know? Why are you selling the numbers and selling the life for the safe plant? It's it's not worth it. In ranked solo queue at least. Maybe in pro player, I don't know. Sorry. What, what, what if I'm harsa because I run two businesses and have multiple women? Andrew Tate, sorry. Sorry, Andrew Tate. Thanks. Andrew Tate could never reach yeah, radiant. Yeah. It's uh, safe, safe, safe. Uh, be, be safe. Cover going out. Spike planted. Don't waste your smokes for nothing, especially in the post plant. Like, and if you're if all of your teammates are playing passively, like uh, one huge benefit of uh, planting the spike here in this position is uh, we have this one way here. And with this one way, like, enemies are just fucked there when they're defusing the spike. We can put even higher, to be honest. So, you know, try to keep one smoke. Why not? I mean, that smoke on the tower does nothing. Which death spawn there? Okay. I mean, it, it does cover CT, but still, and backside. Okay. One huge tip. Whenever we are playing... I already talked about this millions of times. Whenever you're playing on an elevated position, where you can drop behind that position and take an instant cover, always learn and play on the edge of that position. Like this. Ba 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 So I'm holding the CT like this. I'm holding it like this. And once I pick a fight with the enemies, I don't need to commit to the fight. I can just go for a burst fire, reset myself, go for another fight. Play on the edge. So if you start spraying, your bullets go everywhere, I don't know, three enemies peek you in the same time, you don't need to take a fight. It's a safe angle, you pull out the knife, drop down, reset yourself. Okay, coming here. Last One will find... We we'll struggle to find time to game even dating just one, let alone multiple. Yeah, we're like... Literally, I... I, I, I absolutely agree with that. I'm not gonna talk about this post plant. You, you should have played with your deadlock. Play smart. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Like this. Okay. Did this? This is not bad. But this type of a play, I usually don't do in the full by rounds on icebooks. Like this type of a play, I would do in ecos, hull buys, and bonus rounds. But I would never go for this teleport in a full buy, especially if I'm winning the match hard. So I think it would be much better if you just use, like, basically, if you use your teleport to maybe scout the enemies on the site. And uh, one play that I really, really like uh, to do on this map is the following. So, uh, we're pushing A site. And uh, we use a smoke here. We use a smoke in the spawn. And we teleport here. Now... Uh, because communication in Valorant is really low in the lobbies below Immortal 3. It doesn't exist, to be honest. Uh, when the enemies see this smoke, when they're rotating from the B site, from the kitchen, or they're playing top mid, they think that you teleported there. And even if the enemies on the rafters heard you, chances are really high in ranked solo queue that they are not going to communicate that you're here. They're going to be fully consumed and focused that you teleported there, and then you can catch them off guard and take easy kills. And if you don't see any enemies for like, I don't know, 8 seconds, just start making your way towards the rafters and try to surprise the enemies. Now, this play as well, I'll primarily use in some, you know, how by eco rounds where I need to outplay the enemies. This was unnecessary play for the specific economy and round that we have right now. Because enemies are playing a bit of a hull by they don't have enough money for this round and doing this play was why, you know, like just play together and if the team play already worked for you for so many rounds, keep doing it. My favorite is when nobody comes during round, but when you're last alive, you get three people calling out where they think they heard the enemy, your utility, etc. No, 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 my, my, my favorite is like... Uh, uh, when I'm in a clutch situation, one versus three, or one versus one, and uh, four of my teammates are fucking each other's families, mother, uh, whole bloodline, you know? And yeah, that, that's my favorite. That's that's absolutely my favorite. And I forget, you know, to turn on my mute key for the clutch. Do they win this? They won it so. Okay, so on the attack, you kind of have an idea what you could have done better. Uh, also, what we could have applied a bit more because a lot of your smokes were kind of wasted and they didn't have that much purpose. You can, in some of the rounds, use your smoke here immediately to apply the pressure onto the enemies. Uh, when the enemies don't have a sentinel uh, such as Chamber or or Killjoy or Cypher, you can maybe lurk in Eco and Halberd rounds to potentially find some picks, you know, through the kitchen, through the boiler, through the... through the... kitchen, boiler, and under tube. Um, I think that we could have found some picks on mid, because enemies were not putting any focus on mid as well, but team play was working, so as long as the team play game is working, there's no reason to change it. Um, and uh, everything else is, like, explaining the videos that I've shared with you, and... We kind of cover this in depth. Defender side of ice books. Uh, number one tip. This is a sl uh, slow rotation map. So we need to anchor the positions until we are 90% certain that enemies are doing something. Our default site and number one priority is A site. In the first round, I would always play A site. Uh, secondary priority, B site. Uh, on this map, you always need to keep in mind that enemies can be in mid, enemies can be in tube, and to keep the track of the timings, and whether or not enemies are abusing the mid area of the map for any type of a play, especially if you don't have a chamber, killjoy, or cypher in your theme. Sentinel's utility should be stacked on mid, the rest of the team should be on the bomb sites. When you're rotating between A site and B site, majority of the time, 
it's a really good idea to rotate through mid just to check if an enemy is there so, you, so you're not getting backstabbed and fucked through the mid area of the map. The first round with Omen. Uh, once again, there are so many things you can do. So many plays. Uh, on the A site of uh, Icebox, these are the smokes that exist. Smoke number one. Smoke number two. Smoke number three. Smoke number four. Smoke number five. Smoke number six. Smoke number seven. So these are the seven smokes that we can use on a set of ice books for various different purposes. Now, ultimately, my most favorite play on a defender side of ice books in the first round is the following. So, I buy a classic, light shield, two smokes and two shrouded steps. Or two smokes and a paranoia. I'm waiting for the... I'm playing here. I'm waiting for enemies to reach this position. Once they reach that position, I'm using a smoke here. Using a smoke here, like this. And I'm slowly pathing into the smoke. This smoke allows me to surprise the enemies there, to surprise enemies here, while being fully hidden from the rest of the enemy team, and also, through the smokes, you can go for enormous amount of alt plays, depending where you th see the enemies and where you think they are. This setup is also very good in eco rounds, halberd rounds, rounds where you have a shotgun or some shit like that. But, realistically speaking, there's like five different ways how we can play the first round of five books. I'm gonna cover it in my ranked playbook. And this is not one of them. Uh, they coming in. Booby smokes, I like it. Booby smokes, let's fuck them up. Uh, on By the way, this is this is the best. Uh, this is the best uh, um, omen smoke setup to stop the enemy's push onto a, a side. Basically, using a boob smokes. Like this and this to create the one ways and also these smokes like uh, you know allow you to go for outplays such as this and try to fuck up the enemies in some of the rounds very good setup very good smokes i like it but the initial position that you played was really fucked up man like uh, i don't know why would you play on top of why would, like this soft angle here this off angle here, I only play with the um, snipers. If I have the outlaw operator, I'm holding this, taking a kill, and that's it. This off angle I kind of never abuse with with uh, with regular guns. I don't know. You, you, I mean, you can, but I don't know. It's okay angle, like whatever. Probably, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Listen, after you use the boob smokes, you know, this smoke here, this smoke here, I would have actually teleported up here and risked, risked it. Because enemies could not have pushed because of the deadlock wall. Enemies don't see you. And I would have taken a risk fighting this race. Because this race is settling towards the pipes, and it's hardly unlikely that she's gonna pick a fight with you. And when you have these boob smokes, uh, you really want to fight, you know, from elevated positions, such as this one. And anyways, listen, if you... I'm sorry, like these bubble gums are killing me. Uh, if, uh, if you ever get pushed at the backside of uh, A site here, Use your teleport and try to get back on top of the rafters as soon as possible. Because from top of the rafters, you have much clearer vision of the enemies. You see almost every single off angle and position where enemies can play. And you can easily, you know, contest them. You see above the enemy smokes, uh, above the enemy's utility. And especially when I'm playing Omen and I'm playing these, you know, we weird setups. One-way setups to stop the enemy's push. 
it is better for you to be on top of the rafters. When you see me play the ice box, you will see that I use the rafters always to retake the site, uh, to defend the site as my last positions, and stuff like that. Do we win this? No? Okay. Uh, if you lose the first round uh, of Icebox, second round play on A site, and you can abuse the, you know, some smoke setups with the shotguns to get easy kills. Like, uh, basically, we can just use a shorty, we can do the same setup here and here, or we can do this setup here and here, and we can try to, you know, Fuck up the enemies through the smokes and through the ropes. One other thing that we can do maybe is like, you know, we can instantly do a smoke here, teleport into that smoke, because the teleport is not uh, not audible immediately for the enemies. Then we can maybe wait for the enemies, do this smoke here. Maybe enemies are gonna push us, bab up, take a kill, take the gun out, get the fuck out. Uh, there's enormous amount of things you can do. You can just play backside at the end of the day and just, you know, bin chill here around the smokes. It's fine. Uh, if you win the first round of Icebox, the second round, what I always do is I force the outlaw and uh, I peek the enemies. Uh, I play fast rotation between A site and B site. And I'm going for the fast peek through the window and I'm holding the mid area of the map. And based on where I see the enemies going, I just do a fast rotation towards A and B. I don't know why we rotated on, on B site when we didn't have any information that enemies are going B. Cover going out. Absolutely wasted smokes. Why would you do the smokes if uh, you have a short range weapon? None of your teammates are on the site. Chill. Bro, I have a shorty. I need to use the smokes and my shorty step to close the gap with the enemies. How else am I going to get the kills? Right now, it would have been much better if you saved your smokes and maybe use the smoke here, you know, a trial in smoke, like this, in combination with maybe smoke here, and then get into the smoke, aha, one enemy is there, pop, pop, take his gun, kill this guy, now move through this smoke, you know, create, isolate the angles, create the sectors on the bomb sites with your smoke, Elliot Gradient, gorilla power, huh? in TDM I have headshot with Vandal 80%, but in game I have 30%, Bro, in-game you have abilities, uh, you have enemies that are actually shooting back. Uh, in, th in Team Deathmatch, you don't know against who the fuck you're playing. Is it a silver, iron, gold? Above you, above you! Above you, man! Minimap! Spike planted. <laughs> okay, good enough for the, for the eco round. It's okay. The, with the play -off. Okay, so two times in a row, enemies went A, but usually, like 60% of times, 60% uh, of times, in ranked solo queue, enemies are gonna push you through mid and onto B side when they're playing at bonus E core halber round. So this game decision to play B, okay, v valid, 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 makes sense, makes sense. <laughs> Are you a magician, bro? T Tenshin Han. My guy has six eyes. Fucking Master E. Like, uh, so. You're playing top of the yellow. You're playing top of the yellow. And you're playing Outlaw. You cannot scope in. It, to hold this angle. You don't see that angle. Like, you can either hold this position, you can hide here from the enemy Sova drone and then go for a peek and then BAP BAP! You can hold that angle from this position. You can hold that from this position because we see the enemies there. But, only if you're attention Han, Piccolo, I don't know, you see the, in the future, like, you're fucking... Dio, like, you can stop the time, like, I, I cannot hold this angle with Outlaw, because I don't see, the scope is obstructing my vision. With Operator, I need to use a 
5, 1x scope. I cannot use 5x. If I want to hold that angle from this spot, I need to hold unscoped, and I go. I need to go for the quick scope on that spot. I'm telling you guys, like 60 to 70 percent of times, like uh, when enemies are equal hull by on this map, or they're playing a bonus round, they're gonna make a pressure onto the mid or onto the B side. It's an easy gamble. Anymore. <laughs> Bro, I love out. I, I, I love that I've forced you to use Outlaw. You're playing Outlaw quite well, to be honest. Not bad. You found a lot of kills with the with weapon. Um, I just don't know if I would purchase Outlaw in this round because enemies are playing a bonus round and they have heavy shields. And But yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's a very good weapon for this map. Oh, she can be. She can be on site. We need to remember he exists. Coming kitchen and tube. Take care. We are overexposed from six angles, which means that is a bad position. Cover going out. We cannot use the smokes fully open. All of these smokes completely unnecessary. We have the spike. Let's play with the team. Let's find a better position for us. What is a better position? Like moving forward towards the spike, playing with the rays, picking up the gun from the enemies. Free walkers on my Discord server, bruh. I'm telling you guys, you buy my coaching. Like, you <laughs> I sell the cheats. Oh, okay, cross replacement for okay. Mickey Mouse. Cover going out. Cover. You know, Icebox has a lot of good off angles. And... Uh, Smoking immediately doesn't make that much sense. Like on the A set of Icebox, like, you know, you have so many good positions where you can snipe the enemies and fight them. Like, uh, you know, we can fight the enemies from here one round, try to kill them, drop down. We can hide, wait for the enemies while they're pressing the W key, bam, take a kill, drop down. Uh, we can uh, play this angle, try to snipe the enemies. We can play this angle, try to snipe the enemies. We can play this off angle here. Try to potentially get some picks. We can hide a bit, do this smoke, and then pick the enemies on the belt, try to surprise them, try to kill them. We can play this off angle. We can play this off angle. Uh, we can hide here, look down like this, and then when the enemies are, you know, picking the belt, look up, ba ba ba, try to kill them, try to surprise them. Um, I mean, there's probably more, I, I don't know, like. We can go for this aggressive play, like... Going out. You know. This, this off angle, like... In, in, in ELO's below Immortal 1. Bro, I got so many, like... In every ELO. This position. Bam. Easy kill with Operator. Okay. I don't know... Why did you drop down from the from the rafters? I full I firmly encourage you to play on the rafters as your last position. Like don't drop down behind the site. As soon as you, as you drop down at the back site, you can easily be you know enemies can easily make a sandwich out of you. You have nowhere to escape. Enemies can destroy with utility. You know, you're kind of fucked. And generally speaking, on the A set of Icebox, uh, if both me and my teammates are getting pressured, I kind of tend to play towards my teammates. So what I mean by that, like, if my raise is, you know, on the left side here, and I'm on the right side here, I will probably fight more towards the left, to, no, no, towards the raise, try to help her out, instead of trying to stop the enemy's push from the... Right side position. But this was... A bit of a panic mode as well, like, I don't, I don't know, like, uh, You know... This is gonna get better with playtime. But I feel that we're playing way too passively, we're not abusing these off angles to... Punish the enemies. Especially if the enemies don't have a... 
recon agent, such as Sova, or recon agent is not using a proper utility to clear the close angles, by the operator, by the sniper, or abuse these off angles. Like, Fate is using a reveal for the backside. They're not, they don't have any other recon tool to clear uh, the aim and area of the map. Whenever you notice that uh, enemies are not using the proper recon utility to clear the aim and area of the map and the belt, like this area of the map here, pressure the enemies more. Try to play more aggro. Like, uh, there's a lot of plays that you can do and, uh, you know, it's kind of easy. I guess the team comes that either don't have a uh, initi initiator or team comes that uh, that uh, the players that are not using proper. Okay, need it. Thank you. Thanks, my brother. Don't have a proper utility yeah, user. This is way too passive, man. Like I, I don't want to see this. Okay. Okay, drop you down was fine. Okay. Stealing sight. Maybe they rotated. Take care. Mm -mm -mm -mm. In in this 2v3 scenario, it's totally fine to play disconnected. Like, uh, whenever you're in the numbers, in the true numbers disadvantage, it's fine to do what he's doing right now. There is a chance that enemies rotated and we need to find some solo picks and to try to surprise the enemies. Not, not, yeah. not, not a bad idea. Then they come back. No, no, it's nothing here. When they wall up. Mm -hmm. yes, oh, please. yeah. Ooh, why did we make footsteps? No reason to walk now. Rank goal three. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh, okay, okay. It's a fat teleport, man. Once again, one of your biggest problems that I've seen on Icebox is you're using your utility way too prematurely. Wait for your teammates to connect. Wait for you to do some kind of an execute. You just need to pick a better moment of time to use your utility based on your positioning, your teammates positioning, and when we're going for some kind of a play. Timing is missing, you know? Timing. Now the smoke disappeared. The smoke disappeared, and we don't have a smokes for... But we have the aim! Good job, good job, good job. Nice retake. The next time, if I do a word review for you on Icebox, and I see you play this passively on the A side, without abusing any fucking off angle, our friendship is over. None. You're my enemy. Yes, coming A again. Like, look, look where is your sage. But at least go at the pipes and prepare a paranoia for the sage so she can easily kill the enemies. Imagine that. Okay, bro. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> I don't know about this. I don't know. Like, it's way too obvious play. Generally speaking, you know, if you have a numbers advantage, it's better not to do this. And one play that I love to do with Omen 
and his ultimate on a defender side of five box is the following. It's really good. So, enemies are pushing A side. Uh, we do a smoke here, and we teleport into this corner. In this corner, ultimate, ultimate is almost inaudible for the enemies. They, 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 they hear small crackling. If they see the smoke up there, majority of the enemies focus on the CT. And there is a huge chance that you might surprise the enemies and kill them from this position. While wasting their time looking up there. Spike planted. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. Keep the shorty as a primary secondary weapon. Always. Whenever you have money for the shorty, buy the shorty. One enemy remaining. Nice good job. Let's go. Passive gameplay. My deadlock is pushing. Yeah, let's give her immediate one-way smoke so we fuck the shit out of the deadlock. Way too passive. Wait for your smokes a bit. You should do your smokes on the contact between you and the enemies. Or your teammates and the enemies. But in this round, yeah, I want to say there's no way enemies are gonna go A. No way. Like, they're playing a hull by eco round and... You know, whenever enemies are hull by eco or you stop the enemies push on A, turn your focus towards the mid and, and B side. Check the mid, check the mid, you can check the mid, crosser on the left, you crosser sweeping the floor. Actually, now I remember our coaching sessions, man. Your crosser placement was actually terrible during our coaching. This is actually fucking good, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just remember this right now. Like, your crosser placement was so fucking bad. This is actually okay. Not bad, like, like to be honest, uh, compared to what I've seen in January and, 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 and February, this is okay, like, <laughs> like, 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 no, no, this here, like, this shit here that you did, this shit here, look at this, sweeping the floor, that, that reminded me of you, I'm like, yeah, so that's, you know, that, that, that's the problem. No, 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 no. It's okay, it's okay. Spike okay, just uh, whenever you're rotating uh, between A site and B site through the mid area of the map, always, but always, clear this angle, this angle, check the tube, check these positions, and then go for a rotate. Also, if the enemy starts planting the spike on uh, B site, you know, we can just teleport here, try to snipe the enemies, and then drop down and go for the retail with your allies. And as you're pathing through this position, I usually avoid taking this fight. You know, I, I kind of love to path like this, so I have this cover, having a crosser for this, then clearing this angle, this angle, moving forward, clearing this position, that position, etc, etc. But to be honest, it was kind of... Illogical for enemy viper to be there since they're planting the spike behind the sage wall, but you know We always need to be aware that enemies can be everywhere Why, why, why are you surprised this is gold and platinum? Your, your gold wine games are more sweaty. I'm not like, uh, just, just relax, brother. Like, I'm doing what reviews and coaching every single day. Like, uh, th th there is a reason why I consider I don't want to diamond three like a uh, like a uh, low elo in Valorant. Like, literally. You know, bro, like, you, 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 you cannot imagine what I'm watching every single day. You will not kill my allies. 
Are you playing any more solo queue games? Listen, guys, listen. I, I told you already. I mean, you're, you were not here, obviously. From now on, I'm not playing the games at the start of the stream. I'm playing the games in the middle of the stream. So basically, I'm always going to start the stream with a deathmatch, with a VOD review, with the guides, uh, with a rank playbook, with some kind of a reaction, community ranks, anything. And then, as the last part of our stream, we're going to play the games. Why? Because I'm way too fucking lazy to do the content after the games. Because only God knows what type of matches I'm going to get today or, you know, every day, like. You will not kill my allies! Hey, 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 Need help. The cornflake went for the lurk. Remove. Not bad kill. Oh, we saw that guy. I liked, I liked, I liked, I liked, I liked, I liked. I liked. I liked. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, very good. Interesting match. Interesting match. I think that we, you know, it's, it's two and a half hours what review. Like, uh, inter interesting game. Uh, listen. I can definitely see significant improvements in terms of your... In terms of everything, to be honest. Like, when we started our coaching in, in Bronze 3, Bronze... I don't know. I mean, this, this is just getting better and better. Like, uh, the only reason why I wanted us to do this live vote review is just to see your gameplay on Icebox and what you can do better on Icebox. You still have like one and a half, two months to complete the original training that I've shared with you. And we will see in the next vote review how much you're going to improve and which one of these problems are still present for you. But things are getting better. I'm satisfied, to be honest. And I wouldn't change anything in your training thus far. We're gonna see in the next VOD review if you should change something or, you know, apply some more training. Other than that, that's my observation of your Icebox gameplay on Omen. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, join my Discord for coaching. If you want me to review your VODs, make sure to join my Discord server, join the giveaways, or you can buy a tier 3 sub on Discord and get a guaranteed VOD review. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next in the next world review. Mm -hmm.